going in and racking the spray paint and just the, 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 the determination to get the spray paint and putting yourself in that risk. Mm. And then risking your, your, so you're risking your freedom, the potentially your freedom and your life going on to like do train tracks and stuff, all for just like writing stuff on the wall. Yeah. And just putting this, getting involved in the graffiti culture. Like sometimes I'm thinking like, wow, if I did apl applied that energy, if I had someone guiding me, like in a different mm. way where I could, that energy, because that energy, I look back at the energy, I'm like, wow, I had the energy. So like, much power and Yeah, just desire. like jumping up walls, yeah. scaling, scaling up walls, jumping down walls, like fat drops, like, mm. and somehow not getting injured, like, and going up on places that you haven't really assessed and people fall through roofs and stuff, like, you know, and being, and just thinking, wow, like, the kind of, you had some kind of graffiti guardian angel there with you. Mm. Like protecting you somehow, maybe you do have some kind of because garden is, but not you know, some some of these writers have lost their lives, man. Killer Killer Podcast, Killer Killer Official .com. You need the Television app 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central as you need to be, is an undisclosed location. I can't believe how many times we've done this intro. This has been one of the funniest podcasts I've done. I haven't even started it yet. Big shout out to the originals of the shares and carers, the people that have been supporting the podcast and the Television platform from day one. If you know the, if you know the deal, go to Television app free download. I find an Android free download. Stay out sound drunk and I'm not. Listen, um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon boys hide out that's some nft business for you um and yo do you ever feel like you're being watched <laughs> they're here they've been waiting for you for a long time <laughs> sitting next to me is a dual character lewis Fleet henry uh to to some uh, in the busking world um but to us on the street culture level he goes by the name of unknown I'm not so unknown anymore. Though. No, I think you've just been blasted out <laughs> into the public. You've been blasted out to the public right now. <laughs> um, goes by the name of known inside the place. Big him up. Come on, son. How you been? I'm good, man. How are you doing? What is this all about? I, I, honestly, what are we doing here? Why are we here? What we're is this? here. We're just like, you know, you invited me to be on your show. Yes. And it took... I don't know, a year or so to try and get to this point. Yes. And we've made it happen. We fucking have, my brother. We, we have. made it happen, and uh, here we are. And big shout out to UK Frontline as well for connecting the dots, because that question, they, they they definitely were the, the sealers of the deals. Uh, what's with the camper van? Let's, t let's, talk, let's talk about that fundamentally, because this is your nerve centre, right? This is, this is where the magic happens. It's one of the nerve centres. Yeah. I just, I'm into doing the music and uh, busking and playing gigs and festivals, making music, recording albums, just mm. being a musician. Mm. For a long time, I got into it when I was, started, you know, messing around with Casio keyboards mm. when you were a kid, like mm. from August, those kind of things, like with the beats, you put them on and then you just get into music that way. You don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. like have any lessons. You just start making <laughs> sounds of these devices. I know exactly what you Maybe mean. Maybe even like beatboxing and rapping or whatever <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. But my dad had a guitar, so like that was lying around and I just used to kind of like it. That was game on, the on then, yeah. And got into the guitar and just started doing that and been in certain like bands. And then as you get older, like people become more kind of like, they got becomes more kind of intense for them to kind of make a living. So like being in a band, it's like if the band's not really generating money and, and stuff, like and people have like families and stuff to feed, yeah, you can yeah. kind of fall apart and drift apart. So that happened to me. I was in a band called Known. But no. that was from my name. Like we, we used the name for it. Like Stop it. So you had Known the band and Known the, 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 the writer? Yeah, there was like a, a band with like me and... It's a bass player called Ben Powell and this drummer called Zach, Zach Baker. Like, mm. And, uh, you know, it was a three-piece, mm. crazy, psychedelic rock rap band. 
You know, there's a video online called like the story of knowing that this guy he followed us around and you always had this cam called uh, like this guy called like Mason Gaines. <laughs> he was just kind of offended us some or he he got in contact with me through someone else and we were just supposed to do a thing about the graffiti. Yeah. He just wanted to like feel, like this is back in like two thousand and three or something like yeah. that. And it he just was like I was like really into the music and less into the graph at that point. Yeah. So he was like, oh, concentrate on the band. And he did this massive, like, for years. He followed us around and he put together this thing. It's on YouTube called The Story of Known. That's mad. mad. Okay, so we're definitely going to check. So we'll put the links in, in the description below. That's crazy. So you were a band before... Were you a band before Known the Writer? Or was did Known the Writer, was that an extracurricular? Known, known, was, known was first, yeah. But, yeah. like, even before Known, I was in this, this band called Existence of Hate. Right. And it was also called like uh, Critical Mass and uh, yeah so and Deranged that was one of the names we just kept changing our name we were like really into like Pantera and all the rock bands like Biohazard <laughs> yeah, Guns N' Roses listen, and all this that, stuff we've only, we've Metallica been, and all these bands <laughs> we've Pantera and I Hate God and the Wu-Tang yeah. and then like Cypress Hill and House of Pain all that kind of 90s mm. like Nirvana all the good yeah, stuff yeah, Alice yeah. in Chains all it that stuff it was a golden man. era of music full stop yeah man and you had the rave so much scene stuff. I mean yeah I was just getting inspired by the music. Yeah. And the graph thing for me came from being in this band called Existence of Hate. Like, me and a friend, we were out one night. With, he was seeing this girl, so we were out with her mm. and her friend. It was me and him. Mm -hmm. And he was seeing her, and it, it, she, it, she had this other friend, and I quite liked her, but I couldn't really get it together. Like, you know what I mean? I was only, like, I don't know, like, 16 or something, and I just couldn't. Just couldn't like, get it quite get Like, it my together. friend was getting all the fun, and I was just, like, this sidekick, like, yeah, like man. oh, man, if only Sometimes I could it takes pull that girl, while. man. Yeah. Fucking, ah, that kind of thing. Late developers, we And then we, then we were like, when they left us, we were like, oh, what should we, we, we did some like mad thing, like, what should we do? Like, let's get some spray paint and tag our band name on, on this school sign near mm. the school, like I think it's like. And that's so we how did that, I was like, oh my, my, I think my mom's got like this, I remember this tin that was like my granddad's spray paint, spray paint Stop, tin, yeah. it had been in there for like years, it was kind of rusty and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, there's a tin of spray paint, let's go and get that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't, I, but I was into art as stuff at school. Yeah, I really liked art. That was your art. thing. That you... was my thing, like art. Like, I did art, and then I went to like art college. I went to Central St. Martin's. I was like really into like art, like like H.R. Guy going Salvador Dali and all that kind of stuff. I was into oh, that kind man. of mad stuff. Wicked. And so I was doing that kind of crazy art. And then the whole graffiti thing came about from that band writing our band and then like my friend went home and he was like and I was going home and I was like I got the I got the I got the caught by it I was like man I was just like we need to do something bigger like so yeah. I was like oh I got this tin of white spray white paint like <laughs> yeah. let's go back and get that with a paintbrush and go and write like EOH which is the name of our yeah. on our, of our band on this really old building. It's not even there anymore, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, Army, Where else was that? It's like in Lewisham, Army yeah. and Navy. There used to be this massive old department store called Army and Navy. It was amazing. Like, it had this lift in there with a guy that was sat in there operating this really old-fashioned lift. And it was like one of these old department OG stores ones. from back Are in. you being served kind of shit? Like, amazing. My yeah. mum used to take me there, like, in the 80s, and it was crazy. Sent to walking around. Oh, man, I love eras like that. Like, there know. was a bridge that went across from the, in Lewisham, yeah. this yellow and red bridge, tunnel bridge, that went across from mm. Army and Navy to the main precinct. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, just walking around this whole complex... Army and Navy joined up with Lewis from Precinct. Crazy. It was this yeah. mad like, uh, inside kind of like metropolis. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you're being taken. And then you get to Lewis from Precinct. Rare. And yeah. there was like all these animals, like bins. And then you had this playground yeah, that was yeah. animals. It's not there anymore. It's, and you'd have these things, these glockenspiel things that used to turn around at a certain time in the in the day, like in the middle of the centre where the lifts are. <laughs> and it would do and as a kid you'd be like, Oh, it's doing that thing and you try and drag your mum to watch this thing oh, spin and like man. it's not none of that's there anymore. It's really kind of mad. Yeah. But that if you can retain those memories, it's like what was there, like and yeah. you remember things like that from the past. Well, it's funny because we are in the South Coast here and my family originate from the South Coast. And I was saying, you know, I mean 
t- t- take Worthing, for instance, the whole location of it, I just remember it so well. Big up DJ Crafty Cuts as well, because he had that record store across the tracks down here. That's how I got even got into hip-hop, was through him, Crafty Cuts. And, uh, yeah, it's probably nothing like how it used to be, but there's that drawback. It takes you back there where you're just... All the best bits of your childhood come from places where that innocence and you don't really see things for you know gentrification or you know poverty or whatever you call it you know you see it just as your playground don't you yeah well those a lot of those places they were really amazing beautiful places back in the day and they've just gone through mega changes big but changes yeah. why like we try to keep some of it by listing buildings and yeah you know the property developers are developing so much stuff that you know places that we all know and love they get kind of changed like. it's criminal how they get rid of things you know communities let's get into the graph let's get deeper into it so after the after the band uh established yeah, its yeah so like name. i did this this eoh on the with my friend like in the, so it's like a punk style you know back at, even knowing not knowing about any of this stuff mm. like i never paid attention to writing on the wall at all mm. up until this point like i didn't know about it maybe i'd see like something on the street like be oh yeah that's just part of the decoration yeah. of living in an urban environment like and so like i found myself with my friend writing this eoh in white paint with a paintbrush on the wall and then it was it had that kind of it was that punk stuff they used mm. to do in the 70s so sick. they used to do yeah. all of that and you'd see some rem- remnants of that kind of all that stuff's really kind of yeah, yeah. that's a part of the graffiti scene as well that yeah. whole kind of i'd imagine just catford and places like that had a lot of those older walls that just hadn't been touched yeah, for so they long have all this stuff on it like yeah. just so we had that moment of inspiration yeah. and, and yeah it was like oh we're, it's, it's, it, this isn't you're not really allowed to do this really mm. but you know you could uh, it depends how you went about doing it like but being the age we were we just we wanted to do that because yeah, yeah. we were just young and just hyped and just feel like wow this is a good thing to do at the point it's like a bit of band self-promotion or something yeah, yeah, yeah. well yeah because it's DIY you've got, you've got to do it like that and then that. like after that it was like I went off my friend in the band, he was he's the singer, like this guy called Ben Muir. He, we were into Pantera and he, we were doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't artistic, so he didn't, I don't think he went off and got, oh, the bug, like, I want to, like, for me, yeah. I was like really into art at school and, you know, I did A level art as well. And um, so I went back and from an artistic point of view, I got like, I was like, wow, like this, that was like creating a painting, like, it was like, I didn't really see it as, I saw it, yeah, it's illegal, but like, it was illegal. And I was like, man, I just got into the whole kind of, oh, right. So like, I started, there was some kind of mad switch where I was like, in my mind, I thought about, oh yeah, people have tag names and stuff. Cause mm-hmm. like, I remember in primary school, this this guy in my class called Joe Wallen, I didn't, I was into Transformers and He-Man and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. and collecting garbage pile kids. And one day, and we were one of the art kind of kids in the class, you know, there was mm-hmm. maybe like three you could kind of that were four that were like, if you're in a class, mm-hmm. they could draw, right? And, and the kids knew that, that you could join. You were into drawing. And then like, this guy came in one day in primary school and he was like, oh yeah, we, something about tags. We need to get tags. Like, <laughs> and he was <laughs> like, my tag's going to be this. There's and, always one in the school, right? Yeah, and I, my tag at the time that I picked, I was about, I don't know, nine eight or nine I, t- I picked this tag like bozo like and there's a bozo yeah, in yeah. dds right yeah, i yeah, didn't yeah. know anything about <laughs> this do you know what i mean and this is back in like the 80s but for me the word bozo just sounded like like a dope word like yeah, it's it was like kind of big and like fat, a mario like villain almost bozo, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. some kind of thing so i picked that and i remember doing this thing in the in primary school this really kind of bozo thing we all did mm. one like he i can't remember what anyone else was called but i remember like, yeah bozo so i had that like with me that I'd taken from when I was like a kid at primary school. And I was like, oh, right. So I did that. I was like, I need to come up with a tag name. So I came, my first tag name was like asthma. I, in my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm living in the city, man. You're the pollution. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to put a message out there about this to try and stop this. <laughs> I, was, yeah, yeah. I was like, asthma. And I did this. I was like, oh, right. I need to go and buy some spray. I need to get more spray paint. Because so I went, I don't know how I got this money together. Maybe I had a paper round, but I went to this like auto car shop. 
because that's where I thought, oh, if I can get spray, where could I get? Oh, yeah, my granddad's spray paint was mm -hmm. a car spray paint. So I went there and bought like a turquoise and a white. That's all I could afford, just like two cans. Mm -hmm. And I went to this alleyway and did this. You know, I was like, oh, God, that was, I got to find somewhere I'm not going to get caught doing this. So I went down this muse in like Blackheath. You'd have these like muses, like the back of these really big houses where they'd have like in the olden days, they'd have a horse and cart that would come out the back of the garden. Wow. So they'd have these big kind of long gardens right. with with these kind of buildings at the back, like brick buildings. Some oh, yeah. of them were like, they're like dilapidated when I was there. They're yeah. all the kind of like the backs of the garages were all falling apart and it mm. was like people didn't really have the money to fix that stuff up so it was all overgrown you know you yeah, get yeah, like yeah. blackberries and it'd be this muse it's really there's 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 some in new cross as well they new cross still there? Yeah, yeah like massive ones like they go on for so long wow. like, so i was like oh in my head i was like oh yeah there's that place so i went down there and did something there i was like it's not going to be harming anyone uh -huh. no one doesn't care i think i've seen some graffiti there's some yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. down there anyway yeah. so i was just like i'll just do it there and I did that there, and I took a picture, but I don't know where it is. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I wasn't maybe maybe I need to change that name because I wasn't really feeling. I was like, that was cool, but that was a lot of letters. For some reason I just flipped into something else. Like so, I was like, oh, I can't afford to even get spray paint. So, so how am I going to do this? So mm. I get some more white paint. <laughs> You know those garden squirty things? Yes. I'll put some in that, yeah. And then, like, <laughs> shake it up and I'll use I'll try and do something with that. And there was this other wall near me. And Stop I went to it. this, I picked this tag. I think the first tag was, like, uh, fumes. Yeah, I, 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 I did this fumes piece. Like, and I didn't know about fume in DDS either, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this, any of, anything about this she's, stuff. She's called yeah. the sacks every time you like, start, fumes, start so trying I was to like, paint. Yeah, I did that, I did fumes, and then I, I did one of that, and it was mad, because it was like, you'd be like, whoosh, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. for ages. And I was like, this is fucking mad. <laughs> oh, not working. This is hard. And I was like, I'm going to make this happen. And I, made, I had to go and get it refilled. I had to go and refill it up to do this thing. And then the next day I was like, yeah, I'll see it out there. Yeah. And then I was like, I changed my mind. I was like, I'm going to write alibi. I had I designed this alibi because I kept designing these different like uh, styles for like words. Just different words and letters. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, I, I didn't know about the whole thing of staying with one word and becoming like, or doing that everywhere. Mm. I just so what year was that. this? What year was this? This is like 1993, I think. Damn. Okay. Like 1993. 1994 mm. so I kind of I found myself and then and then I was like oh I did this alibi the same way I was like I can't do this this is hardcore mm. man like I'm doing this all wrong I need spray paint yeah, <laughs> I was just yeah, like yeah. I need that spray paint <laughs> give me the goodies <laughs> I didn't even know yeah, like, I didn't even know anything about spray paint I was just <laughs> like I just, I need, what I need is I, know, I knew that I needed spray paint mm -hmm. and the only way to get spray paint is in these flipping tins Yeah, that's where yeah. it's in like spray paint so, oh have this realization of needing to get spray paint and it's like i think the first kind of before like i met any writers i'd i'd buy spray paint i'd somehow like buy spray paint i don't yeah i was up until a point i was just like okay so like i started getting the spray paint that i think i was buying i wasn't nicking it racking it i was just buying spray paint and then like if i had an idea i kind of did another EOH, but in spray paint. There was this, like, craggy thing down in Lewisham. I kind of used to do stuff down there. It was in the dark down by the water. It right. like, but it was a bit of a reach as well. So I kind of got into this whole... Yeah, it was like... I started getting a bit more out there with it. I was like, mm -hmm. I, like I don't want to do one now. I need to do one in another place. I need mm -hmm. to find somewhere else that I could get away doing it, this run down and dilapidated type How thing. quick was that momentum for you when, when you suddenly got the urge to do that? Was that, what, within a space of a month? Yeah, it was just kind of happening. Like It's kind of like, so that point from doing that asthma to the point where I was jumping down in that that quaggy kind of area was like, maybe it took like six months or something, six months to kind of... But I was doing these like, yeah, I'd go, to, I did an EOH down there and then I did a crisis. I, I, I chose to write crisis for a bit. I wrote crisis, EOH. And then uh, I was, I think I, I came up with like, after that, like, that's when I started going, oh, I need to come up with a serious tag name. Mm. 
Mm. Like something that I'm gonna stick yeah, the, to because yeah, yeah. I can't keep that coming up with these different styles. Like for some reason, I I just came up with this unknown thing. Like I swear it was just an unknown with question marks because I was like, oh yeah, I need to be unknown somehow. It's just like mix that all mm. in with it. So the word unknown came to me from like just remaining unknown, like and just doing this stuff. And I used to do like these. You know, homicide victim outlines on the floor. Yes. In chrome <laughs> God, paint. Because so I was sick. into like Biohazard. <laughs> Dude, that's how they call this shit. I was into that band Biohazard and they, and they had this album cover. And I think on the front it had like one of those homicidal, mm. I think it's called Urban Discipline or one of these mm. albums. It had that somewhere in the imagery of their whole thing. Mm. It's like, yo, New York hardcore. Yeah, of metal. course. Like Biohazard rapping, like Onyx and mm. that. So there was that hip hop edge from it from being like into like. Onyx and that, when they had that transfer. Yeah, being into that. metal and this guy, Ben Muir, who used to get all the CDs, he was the one that we we went round to his house to hang out and he'd play the latest CD and, you know, we'd hang out like, and it was cool. like, and we'd, so he'd, But we'd burn fun. copies on tape cassette, do you know what I mean, to take yeah, back and we'd all yeah. get into the music together. It's golden eras, man. Yeah, and go to see the bands. Man. In the days, if you, bro. You know, if you were... Tape mixing. Some, somehow one of your friends would get the, the, the knowledge. I wasn't really that guy, like... My friend who I was with, he was like, oh, do you know who's playing in town? Like, Pantera, do you want to go? Like, they're playing at the Marquee mm. Club, and it's like, what? We, you you got to be 18 to get in there. And it was like, we were like, I don't know, 16 or 17. Marquee <laughs> Club in Soho, man. That was, an, that was a fucking venue as well. Jeez. Yeah. So many venues have gone. Anyway, look, we're not going to get into that. So what happened? So who were the writers that you... Yeah, so most... like, I started doing that, like, outline thing all around the place in Lewisham, just like, like... It must have freaked people out, like in that way, because that's what my intention was: was to just yeah. like be creative in a way, like yeah. of, of an artist. Like I was into like Salvador Dali, big time, and like H.R. Geiger. I was into like surrealism and just like art, like, and I felt like I was doing like art out there. Mm. You know, it it was kind of it had the, the street it, it had the edge of like you know this is kind of like you know they call it vandalism or criminal damage. But the, the reason why it got to the next level is because like one day I was like I was at like, Honor Oak Park train station. It was li- near where my I grew up, and uh, my grandparents lived there. Like so, I grew up in that area as well. And I was up there in that area, and I was at Honor Oak Park train station. I just had a tin of spray paint. And it was like broad daylight, and uh, I didn't know any writers up to the other people that wrote. Did this mm. up to this point? I've just thought I was the lone wolf out there mm-hmm. doing this. I mean, there was some few like, but I didn't ever think that I'd meet anyone because it was just like everyone does that. They, you're never gonna see because you, you're hiding in their yeah, hiding. Yeah. You'd never see them. Yeah. So I was like, I was at the train station, and there was a telephone box, and I saw these kids standing there that were like round about my age, and they looked like I don't know if I saw them do a tag in the the phone, the phone box, but they were loitering over by this phone box. And I, and they were looking at me, and I was looking, and and I think they did the tag first, mm-hmm. and I think they did it. They were looking at me as if to say, like, look what we just did. We just did this tag. What are you saying? Of, like, like, are you down with you in this situation? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. going, or are you gonna grass us up? Or yeah. do you know what I mean? Because they were like bombing up this thing, like, like just in broad daylight. And I was like, and I had this spray paint, and it all happened at the same time. I was just like, right, I'm gonna just do this this blam on it the, of the the unknown thing on the floor. So I just started doing that in front of them on the floor, this outline thing. And and then they went, what? <laughs> they, they came over here and they were like, right. That's crazy. It was, it was like this guy called Acid mm-hmm. and this guy called Curve and this this other guy, I, I can't That's remember so what he wrote. That. Sick. There, it's there almost was like a jewel. Ding, 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 but ding, they were ding, like, ding, bro, ding. You're, that, you're that guy that writes the un- I, I remember Zeph saying like, Oh, you're that guy that writes that unknown around the place. And they were like, they'd seen it and they were, I was like... You must have got a right I was, out, I was like, right, I was like, oh, what, you seen that, like... And they were like, yeah, like, oh, man. And they were just, it was just hyped, man. And they were like, yeah, we seen that one done. And, and they were like, we write this, like, we write... Asset. And I was like, right, these guys are writers. This is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the people shit. that do that. Like, and I was like, whoa, I was like, whoa, whoa. And I was like a bit like, wow, this is like... They like they were like you need to come you you need to come and hang out with us. That's what they said to Dude, me. That must have been so new to you because yeah. you were just not from that world and you no, yeah. you'd integrated into it. It was mad. They were like you need to come and you need to come and like hang out with us. We mm. we'll show you what uh, like what the graph about graffiti. 
you know, we're, we're we'll show you about graffiti writing and all that. And, and I was like, Russ, like hanging out with them. Was that when it started getting serious? When that you was were... when they were like, I was hanging out with Zeph and he was like, so I went out, I went, I think it was, I went to meet him and um, he's like, took me out on this like, I didn't know what we were doing. He took me out on this, the whole day it was like, it was like a racking mission and also racking like cockles. What he he was really? I was just forced into this situation where I'd have to go into a place and he started nicking stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like racking stuff. Like it was like a, one of these supermarket, little mini old like supermarket <laughs> flipping like some co-op thing out in the middle of nowhere. And they were they knew the security knew him in there and he was getting chased out. He said, Lou, like I'm banned from all these places, and he was like trying to like, you know, just get some food and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes yeah, just food, like, and, and placing me in that situation, I was like, oh man, this is like a bit mad, like, yeah, yeah. this is proper, like, I wasn't like, this is this what, what I signed up for. This isn't what I want to do, mm -hmm. like, and then he was like, I remember him telling me outside, like, he's like, if you want to do graph, you're going to have to rack spray paint. I was like, yeah, like, really? Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, follow me. So, like, I followed him, and I think we went into some Halfords or somewhere, and he just flipping, like, racks of spray paint, and I think he, he made me rack some spray paint, he's like, you got to rack some spray paint. Or, or, or I didn't or I didn't rack the spray paint. I can't remember what it was, but like we left there and I was like, oh, right. And then I had to rack some spray paint. Because the pressure was on. Yeah, and it was like, it just got to this point where I was just like, I was going out with him and going on these. Yeah. And then later on, we'd, I'd go out with him and he'd take me to this place where there's all graffiti, like graffiti there, like a graffiti spot in a run-down factory, like yeah. in the back of Lewisham. And he'd take me in there and it's where people went to do pieces. And like, I just started hanging out with him and Curve and they'd take me out. I'd go out with them and we'd go on these graph missions and it was mad. It was just like, just get your young and stuff. And they're like doing all this really risky I'm seriously, stuff. Bro, I've seriously gone into like a, a, a storytelling mindset. They take you into like the risky what? stuff. They start doing risky stuff around you. Like, and taking you like, yeah, we're going to have to go on the tracks. I was like, what? The flipping train tracks? Like, it's flipping like... You don't go up there. Like, who the flip goes on the train tracks? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the next thing you know, they're taking me on the train tracks. And I'm like, this is this is mad. Okay, like, so what was that like? when On your first intro of the uh, of the tra of track sides and train tracks? That was just, like, hanging out with Zeph and, like, Acid. Like, he used to write Image and, um, like, uh, Kaiser as well. Mm -hmm. I think it went Image, Rummy. He wrote Rummy, then he wrote Kaiser. And then he got on to Acid One Five, and like I was, I was that's what I was hanging out with him through that transition of what he was doing. And Curve was just always oh. writing Curve, yeah, in his style, yeah. And they were they knew each other before. I think they went to the same primary school. How long did it last? Your relationship with these guys? How long did that last for? Well, that lasts for a long time, man. Yeah. So like, and then they introduced. Next thing I know, I'm hanging out with them, but I'm doing my own thing at the same time. I'm mm. like going on this unknown thing and doing my thing, like just. Mm. Taking what I'd learned from them and applying it in a like, oh, right. So I knew kind of, I got into the idea of like getting a reach. Mm -hmm. Like they introduced me to the whole idea of philosophy about the reach. Where I love that Lewis Floyd Henry is talking to me about reach. <laughs> some of your some of your mates, fans, and people that, people that love your stuff right now are going to be like, what? That don't know that you were known. That's just going to blow their minds. Yeah, the, the reach. Just getting on it. Just yeah. getting on and painting. I remember seeing massive known pieces as you come into um, New Cross Gate. Just incredible, mad like size. And, you know, obviously you, you dominated the London Bridge area. So I was doing this known thing. And then at that time I was like at this, this college called Central St. Martins mm. doing the foundation in art. So I was going, getting really deep into that as well. Like, they took us to Amsterdam on a on an art field trip hmm. with some other people, hmm. and there was a, some other guys there that wrote. And they the, these guys were from like North London, so they were they really all knew about the whole DDS kind of. Hmm. Who were they? One guy's called Dusk. Dusk. He was on my. He was in my class. Right. And uh, there's another guy called Bao and these other guys, they had they had tag names, I can't remember them though, but like, 
they were writers as well. They had cool tag names. Mm -hmm. And this dust guy was in my class and we worked out that we were into graph. And he was friends with Teach and like, mm -hmm. he knew Teach and all of those guys. <laughs> And he was, he was like, oh, so show me your tag then. And I did this mad, like, unknown thing with, a, like, a, a, a question mark in the O, and then it came back off with another question mark at the end. And he was like, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. And he just, and then he was like, did his mm. thing. Like, but in the DDS style, I was like, oh, that's nice, you know. Like, the way mm -hmm. he did it, I could see those letters. Like, it's the first time I really understood about, oh, shit, I wish I could do that that style of letters. That, that yeah, which kind became of London in a nutshell over that period of time, wasn't it? And, mm. and still to this day holds true. It's got to be readable. Yeah, you see that. And you understand the... the Because the graphic design behind it, the font. Mm. Like, you start getting into fonts yeah, and yeah. understanding the, the the kind of measuring behind fonts, like fair, old fairground kind mm. of, like, signage and stuff like that. There's kind of, there's maths and measurements around that and getting the nice shape S's and, mm. you know, getting the C's into nice shapes. Like, it's all kind of geometry. Mm. Graphs like a geometrical kind of thing in a way, you know. When you see these pieces, they look like mad kind of yeah. angles and stuff coming all off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when when people you start entering that world and understand, it's like whoa, it's like, man! Arrows know, like coming off. Sweet here. and candy bar brands try and replicate that with their logos all the time, just trying to give it a little funk, a little different yeah. kind of context and vibe. It so, so this guy yeah. was like, "Yeah, you should write. Why don't you write known?" Like, and he did this, and I was like, no, nah, man, I, my first thing was like resistance. So I was like, no. Nah. Like, I don't want to do that. I'm no. like, I write, un, I write unknown, you know, it's all about being unknown. And he was like, yeah, but it's like really long. Yeah, it's long. He's like, it's really long. And mm. I was like, why don't you? And I was like, yeah, in my mind, I was like, yeah, it is really long, but I'm kind of still doing this thing. So I was doing these mad pieces out there. Like, there was one in Catford, I remember, mm. that was a mad reach, man. That was a mad night, that was mad, because. I got chased by some like, you know, back in the in 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 the nineties there was some kind of like, gang shit going on, but not like how it was now. Like, mm. It's like there were like little factions like around, mm. but you just kind of just like when you're a teenager growing up, you kind of yes, yeah, like, there's a lot of kind of like learning to be done, and people are at different phases, and you get caught up in certain situations and stuff. So mm. like. You know, you're navigating through that as well, living in in places like Lewisham mm. in, in London. You know, I was I'm not about that kind of thing. I'm just all about, you know, the art and the and the music. Mm. You know, I'm not coming at like at it like a vandal. Mm. You know, I'm not like Did it drag you in that though, with the lifestyle? I got that... like I started hanging out what well, through the through going and meeting them like, and then you start hanging out with like so they they introduced me like Acid and curve into FDC, the people mm. in FDC. We have like, FDC, oh my God. There was like, I, I, I think I went out on a mission with them one time. The first mission I went on, I think it was at, um, down in Lewisham at the factory or somewhere, where, where the first one that was like off, like, out, like, I just find myself in these situations with these other writers that I've never met before, but I'm hanging out with them through acid and curve mm -hmm. so people like cons and dire sir mm -hmm. i remember going out on on a mission a few missions with them and they were like oh my god some of those missions are mad like, really yeah because it's like them someone else has planned this thing and you're just Dragged along for yeah, the ride, going, yeah, like, and then and, and then you're putting the the point the point where you have to do this piece with these other writers, and it's the wall space, like understanding where you're gonna do your piece, being able to measure up the wall, being able to know how big someone's gonna go, and you, you get to this place and you see someone like Sir just start doing this massive thing, mm. like huge, and you see these stuff yeah. around, and you're like flipping out, that's massive, but because he's got like three letters. You mm. can go real kind of tall. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When you've got longer less letters, you can't just go bang tall like that because you've got to, like, yeah. work out how much spray paint you've got and Fuck. also the size of the wall. So, like, with a three-letter tag name, you can go quite high. Yeah. Like, like sub. I used to see sub and if in Camden. Yeah. Whenever I went to Camden, because I was into all these metal bands, I was yeah. into that scene. Yeah, and yeah. Camden in the 1990s was such a cool place. Shoe 2 as well, Shoe as well, and what else? There was, I mean, there's Pow as well later on. And 
Yeah, I I just remember see, like I just started noticing about learning and I was in seeing that DDS and anything associated with DDS, you see that stuff around and it's like flipping like fat stuff like chrome and black like mm. massive mm. dubs that were there just. Some of them looked like they'd been there for time. Up in places, I remember this sub and this if in Camden. They used to be this factory kind of place and or some building, and they had these massive dubs up. It was the biggest reach. Mm -hmm. Like you go there and you just be, whoa, like sub and if. It's like Crazy. these ones, like you're like, Crazy. whoa, those ones are massive. Like you'd see them, mm -hmm. they're massive, and so you're always trying to get bigger like that as well like mm. you kind of feel like oh it's inspirational to see these massive dubs into like mm. it kind of inspire you like being into art and just trying to under like get into that that scene of art mm. you know oh. and getting the getting the <sighs> you blow my mind really today, into it, like yeah. from, from that standpoint and just being grabbed into like the whole graffiti art form and the only way it can exist, the, the way it exists from the 70s and stuff is through like that. You know, you learn, like I remember even before I was doing graffiti, like at primary school, and I used to go around to my, my Aunt Ruth's house in, mm. at Christmas time, Boxing Day, and she had a son called Derek. Like, and he, he was a little bit older than me, and he had, a, he had a copy of Subway Art. And I used to go around there once a year or twice a year and I was always look like I remember the mm. first time he showed me that book, and I was like, raw, like looking through it and going, raw, look at all this stuff on the trains. And his one was all falling apart. So it was like, but he was really into like, he got me into Marvel comics. So he was like, like in Lewisham used to have comic shops. There yeah, were a yeah. few comic shops. I loved the artwork in comics, all those those styles. Got mm. in 2000 AD, all the different artists. You're into like Asterix into. and Ren and Stimpy and things But what like that. else? The other thing I was into was like Warhammer and those little Citadel figures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was this other, there was this other guy, the lead Daniel Soffield. There was a few guys like that. Not only were there the drawers and stuff, mm. you'd have kids in there that were into like painting those figures up mm. and they'd come in with these figures and you'd be like, oh man, that's so dope. And, and they'd yeah. get you into that and like you'd get some figures and you tried to paint them and but you'd need the right paint to get yeah. the right look. And oh, if you were doing like, it wrong, science, if you're doing it wrong, like with enamel paint, it's like they had this certain paint and some of yeah. my ones I didn't understand. Blood they'd... Bowl. Do you remember Blood Bowl? Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl was a good the game, man. That was Warhammer. Yeah, Warhammer. Was, and White Dwarf magazine. Do you remember that? White Dwarf yeah. magazine. So like I love all that shit, So man. we were like he was into that, so he got me into the whole comic 2000 AD thing, like my friend Dan from mm. hanging out with him. So And you transferred that into your graph? I remember seeing I transferred seeing that. that into my graph, that's the thing. I was into that whole sci-fi kind mm. of stuff. So I, st I started getting, seeing all the big chrome and black stuff and got into the whole chrome and black thing and got into like, I'd go off on my own gr racking missions and start racking up as much chrome and black. Mm. And then I got... When I switched to doing, when I got, it, it, I started seeing like D, DDS stuff and I started seeing FDC stuff and, 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 and knowing about these writers in these styles and also going to college up in Farringdon. Mm -hmm. And whenever I got the tube train, I'd see their, of course, yeah, I'd see. see their stuff in these places. I was like, yeah. whoa, this is hardcore. And I was getting into it in the time where I was going onto the tracks as well and like doing, doing pieces on the tracks, man, just like mad stuff, like mm. going into mad situations. It got, it got fucking peak, man. Like really? some of the situations I'd put, place myself Give me in. an example of peak. Like flipping one time in, uh, I went to this wall in Brixton, like you'd see it on the train. And cause I had another friend at art college. So this guy called and he works with like flipping one of those big flipping Yves Saint Laurent. He's like, he's really? like, right. I, I lost touch with this guy, but mm. he was on d into designing. Like he'd made this mad chair out of like, tra like translucent kind of fiberglass with fiber optics in it. And it oh, was shit. just this chair molded like a 60s chair. He was, into, he was into design. So I used to go and hang out with him. And when I was hanging out with him as well and seeing all this stuff in North London and seeing those styles around mm. like DDS and stuff like, you know, teach and diet. And then you'd see like a lot of like fizzer throw ups yeah. around. Yeah, of course. You'd see a lot Legendary. of that and you'd start seeing those things and you'd see like fume 
Mm-hmm. And you'd see, I'd be like, right, I used to write fumes. That's <laughs> mad. There's a fume out there. You still like, a style, man. <laughs> and, and also like bozo as well. I yeah, bozo. Was a yeah, bozo. Totally. I was like, right, man. Like, Rust, to... chop. Yeah. Well, something, God, the list goes on, man. Like... But for me, the big one was like the bozo because I was like, Bruh, like that dude's writing bozo. Oh, he knows what I'm talking out, about. Yeah, you know? He's doing the bozo thing from flipping way back. Because mm, like. mm, mm. that was my first tag in, in primary yeah, school. That's the one I went like bozo. Uh, and someone would just ch- chose that as well. And the fact that someone chose fumes. So then I'd see all their styles and I'd start learning about like letter, for, letter styles and putting a 3D, the mm. way you put the, the 3D on it, right? Or 3D on the letters. The, mm. And then, like, doing the out... When it came to doing the final outline, that was a whole other level of... Yeah. You start picking up these 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 things, Tricks. like techniques that mm. people were applying to their letters in order to... Were you watching it, or, or did you... did Were people there as well saying to you, no, do a bit of that, do that? I was, I was, I was just picking up on it and seeing it and getting, like, hip-hop connection and seeing the... This is before I even heard about graffitism. The only way you could see... There was a magazine called Hip-Hop Connection. Yeah. And it was like, I was into like, if you're into rap as well, you'd get this magazine, you could buy it in WH Smith's. Yeah, it, was, it was cool. You'd go down to these places and get get like Krang and get like Frasher and get these magazines. Yeah, yeah, you'd yeah, get, yeah. buy comics and stuff. And and then there was that other book called Spray Can Art. Yeah. That one. And Crazy. It's, got, it's got Goldie in it. Yeah. It's got Mo 2 in it. Yeah. And they're doing these styles that were like, you know, the you could see there was a comic kind of there aspect was of it. Very much. 2000 so. AD, Marvel. These guys have got their characters Bode down. They could, they could draw. You could tell that they could really draw, but they've got the they've gone into the graph mm. style with the that drawing. That must have perpetuated like street, like, whoosh, That must have like, felt you, you must have you're carried. Like, you're like, yeah, you yeah. just start oh, getting that. into that aspect of graffiti. Yeah. Like the style. Mm. Like, not only have you got the stuff going down on the street and everyone's got this matter, but there is this style going on mm. in the hip-hop culture. Yeah, you merged them both together. You merged them both so well. I think the thing that's you did you 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 suggested it yourself and yeah you were quite a a lone star in the game. I was just like always looking for like the best reach to do something fat and there was just I just remember from all my t- trips on the train there was this wall at Waterloo East and I just went there got racked enough paint to to do this massive piece try and fill out the whole space like and then put an alien character in the end because yeah. I used to do alien characters associated with the known like it was all like known yeah we know about that, that 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 could exist like it's known if you found out about it so, <laughs> you know like yeah. and then I like, started doing that but then got mad because then I think there was one night I went out on a mad one with um cons and Dyer and we went and did this tube yard in Muswell Hill right we went and did that and then it was just me and Zeph on the way back home to, to, from London Bridge we got caught on the um yeah yeah, we at London Bridge. This was just as CCTV was coming in. There wasn't much CCTV out there, and it was like they'd installed some in London Bridge, and we didn't really know the the, the scope of it. And we just well, fuck it, just did a tank yeah, underneath yeah. this camera. We're not gonna get. Then we went off, got off at Lewisham, and walked all the way from Lewisham, headed up to Bromley, and ended up in Catford. Then we got pulled in Catford, me and Seth, by these undercovers, and they were like, "We know what you're doing. Just go home." Fuck. They gave us a chance to go home. We were like, Fuck. okay, and then we were on a mission and then we just like continued and then further up, like like I did a tag on the police station, but it was peak like they must have seen that. The, yeah, they yeah, must yeah. have seen that whilst we were doing and then they just pulled us up on the road. We couldn't run nowhere and we got like bagged and it was just like, oh shit, it was real, man. That's the first time I ever got bagged and Fuck. it was like then like we stayed in the cell, then they let us off. And I remember Zeph going, this is fucking, this is Pete Lou, this is that, do you know what I mean? This is... Because you, you don't ever and expect they, to and get... They, put... they, got, they got, like, documented a lot of my stuff. Like, they'd had a file on me, the British Transport Police. Really? Like, I just used to jump up walls, just go anywhere, just everywhere, just doing... Some of it happened to be on British Transport property. And, uh, yeah, like, I didn't really know. I was just going to get the reach. Like, and people would see it from the train and be like, well, oh, like, it was just... It was at that time when that was just, like... I think even if you weren't like a graffiti artist and you saw the, you'd just see it. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, you'd be like, whoa, like so, like, I got bagged and then my place got raided one night, and I had all my stuff down. Never thought I'd get raided. Got raided, and then the next thing I know, I'm going to like court. Like oh, they put this case up against me and then went to court and then they gave me like, I was hoping to get community service, but you know, I I tagged a, a police car one time because I had the same colour. Uh, spray paint and it was just part there at night and I was just walking 
by and just did a tag and they documented that. And I just oh, don't, I don't, I didn't really do lots of trains or like, like tube train trains. Yeah. I did some trains and some, some of the overline trains. So, like, but like, I was just more like reaches and track sides and stuff. Maybe I'd done some tags inside the train, but like, yeah, I got caught and then they were like, oh, you got to do like three weeks, six weeks in Feltham. I was like, oh my God, this is, the shit's just got real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. my God, like, yeah. no way. I was just like, oh no, and I was, I was at art college as well doing a degree like in like yeah. <laughs> graphics and illustration. Do you know what I mean? This is just messed up. And it was like, so I, I ended up having to do three weeks, but that was like flipping out. I just like just put in the cell with some, with like edgy people where was you're it, like it it's horrible? quite edgy and you saw stuff go yeah. down in there like rival gang stuff fights breaking out really? at like visiting times and stuff like some serious shit with some rude boys in there do you know what I mean really? it's like, and you get picked on by the screws as well I remember one time I was got put in a cell with three guys who just sat there and then we went off to get some food then he came back and he was like who's sitting here and he knew I was sitting there and he pointed to all the the, 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 the key marks that people had done on the wall yeah I didn't do it and he was like you did that and he's like you did it didn't you and I was like you looked at my father I was in for graffiti he definitely did that and he's oh like oh I'm good God. and then he was like I was like no I didn't do it and then it was like well if you did if no one owns onto it you're all going to have like an X amount of weeks of thing taken away from you and I was just like I ended up like just I don't I don't know what happened but like, that was fucked up it's That's not so where you want to be bro. and then the next time so I was like fuck it made me stop I, I was going all out till then I was I, I was just like I was going mad, you see, I was, I was moving mad. I did a piece underneath the camera and then did the police station. It was getting a bit mad. They were watching us, like back in those days when mm. it was like undercover and, and close circuit security. Those yeah. British Transport Police, they probably saw us at London Bridge yeah. and then was like, right, follow where these guys get off. Let's yeah. see where they get off. And yeah. then we'll we're, we're send a unit there. We'll have units, all units prepared at these various train stations. Just be on the prepare for these two Fuck. graphers. They're graphing up. It's that known guy. Maybe they saw the known to And yeah, anyway, yeah, I got yeah, caught. Yeah. Then the next time, so I'd stopped. I was like, man, every time I went out to do something, it just felt a bit edgy and a bit mm. wrong. It was like I had more to lose. It was yeah. like, before I hadn't been caught, I was Not like, fun anymore. you're a bit more invincible. But then after that, I was like a bit more pranged and stuff. So I was like, I sat back a bit on it and just started. Maybe I tried a few things. And, and then like... I might have even done that massive thing afterwards, but I left it a little time. Mm. I can't remember the, the, the chronology of it all, but like... This was I, Waterloo, wasn't it? This yeah, was the and it was like, Waterloo I just piece. kind of done these reaches and stuff off yeah. on council state buildings, like way up high, like dangerous places. I don't even know how I got into these places. How so. many pieces do you think? Because you, you did a lot. I don't know. I did, I did a lot of pieces, you man. I had the energy to just get up at night and just do it, like, and put, place myself in dangerous situations. Like, when I was... Saw so that wall in Brixton that I was talking about. The one it's on a curve, and like mm. I was, you have to stand on these these like maybe five or four railings up halfway up this building, kind of thing. We're quarter way up this building to this wall where everyone's done these dubs up high. Yeah, and it's like if the train comes round, you've got to climb, you've got to jump down, climb down these flipping railings, and go in as close as you can to the railings, or go down on the floor. That happened to me. I was just graphing, and I heard this train coming. And it was cut, I couldn't see it, but it came round the bend fast like a freight train at like two o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I, all I could, I just like, I grabbed into the railing as hard as possible, do you know what I mean? And I had a rucksack on me as well, I think, and that could have just got caught by some bit of the train. It's like Fuck a building that. moving past you at a speed. Mm -hmm. Like, and the, the, hev the, the, the massiveness mm -hmm. of it all. Yeah. Like, and the speed and the sound and your feeling, this is... There's been a few times where I was just like, I think about it and I'm like, wow, I did that. That was fucking, oh, man, I wouldn't want my kids doing that kind of shit. But like, do you know mm. what I mean? Like, I got caught and then I sat back from, and that in, this guy called Inser, he was, <laughs> Big he up was Inser. studying at like <laughs> Goldsmith. And I used to see this Inser tag around like Greenwich and stuff. Yeah. And I could see that he was kind of With really, drip kind of I could see his early stuff was really like, he really liked what I was doing. So mm -hmm. I think he inspired him to do this Inser stuff. And he was like, when we met, it was like through this kind of rap, kind of connect hip hop. I used to do this kind of freestyle chat, uh, open freestyle uh, like thing called Channel Zero with these two guys, and yeah. they they yeah. were at Goldsmiths as well, and we kind of got connected like that. But he, Insta was doing like a work experience for graffitism, so so he he approached me like, oh, I'm doing my work experience. They're like, oh, would you be up for graffitism, like doing a piece? And yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, like yeah. And then we did this this piece, and then they came out and. And, and interviewed me and then like I went to um, 
out on a mission with Insta just to take photos of the stuff I did for the magazine. Mm. And we bought spray paint with us and we had cameras, you know, like proper cameras with the film <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> Old so school like shit. Going around and then we reached Royal Oak and, and, and on the way out there was this like Royal, Royal Oak Latimer. We saw this building on the right, like massive factory with two twin like kind of uh, chimney things, mm -hmm. a, a kind of ladder thing going outside. I was like, right, let's go in there and do a piece and take a photo of that one that I did. And, and it was derelict, there's loads of stuff there. And it was like, totally derelict, loads of graph, loads of mashed windows. And I just went, we, he did a piece there. We, we got in there, it was easy to get in. We got in there, it was like, wow, this is some old like cinema or something. And then I, did, I climbed up the thing to do a piece. Mm -hmm. Down this, down this chimney thing, and when I was up there, it was really risky reach, you know, right up quite high. Like I think about, it, I was like, wow, that thing, that ladder could have come away. Easily. And I looked over whilst I was uh, so up high <laughs> in the daytime, and I looked over at this building, and it was like this guy was standing there with a white shirt, and he looked kind of official. Then I was like, and he was just like kind of just watching me, just like from quite far. I was like, oh no, it's a fire brigade station. It's like a fire brigade. This is a fire brigade oh, guy. Look quite official, kind of, and he yeah. rang up. He must have rang up the police because the police just turned up out of nowhere and arrested us both. And we were like, "Oh my god, it's just derelict, though." But like, and they were like, "No, they arrested us. It was serious, man." Because wow. that we were in North London, so the amount of shit they deal with in North London, it was yeah, they do different. Yeah, different. They like hold more anger against the graffiti. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Graffiti They've artists, dealt so. with it a lot. Of yeah, years. so like, <laughs> then I ended up. We ended up having to go to court over that, and and. And then he was doing like he's he's not from that kind of like mm -hmm. hardcore background. No, really. no. He's a goldsmith, like studying like I think he was studying art, you know. And he he's was a chilled into cat. In he yeah. into and he likes to do the fashion thing. He was like so then like all of a sudden he finds himself in this situation with the potential of getting sent to prison. He was like, oh my god, I don't want to go to prison, you know. And his mum and dad's there, and he's not from <laughs> London, and it's his girl. And I was like, oh my god, I've been caught before. This is fucked. No, you're going down. <laughs> and I was just chilling out. I didn't even really want to do this interview, but I, did, I ended up like going, yeah, do it. And it got me back into it. And that way, where it was like, we ended up getting sent to like Brixton oh, for like shit. They gave me like flipping like three months or something i was like oh my god what? and they gave him like what i had before like six weeks yeah. so we like we were like oh my god we spent the week together in this put in this prison so they put us together it was kind of funny like oh, that god. we like they could have separated us so we, yeah. we were together and i think they were like look let's not go too hard on yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. on this insta guy let's put him in there with his friend because they probably looked him off and they, and they probably thought i was like oh look he's been caught again like let's like three months yeah. is a long time yeah bro. so that we ended up appealing and like we got out after a week, but it, it seemed like fuck, a long time. You know, like when you're like, this is just going to be ongoing for yeah. a bit. And and then when I came out after that, I was just like, do you know what? This is just too much. I just can't yeah. be going in and out of prison like this. This is like, this isn't what it's about. Like, so I just stopped. And like, I got, I did like, I'd had this period when I stopped and then I got contacted by the Broccoli Max Association and this friend of mine kind of knew them and they were like, oh, they're looking for someone to do a mural and they remembered, like, it was kind of near mm. the time and they said, would you like to be up for it? And I was like, it's outside Broccoli train station. I was like, yeah, and I just did this massive mural of, like, the artwork that I was doing around that mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. Instead of, like, a known thing, it was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I can actually That's cool take it to a level because they're yeah. actually paying, buying for as, paying for as much spray paint as I need and whatever vision that I have, it was mm. like a real kind of opportunity to, like, Mm. showcase some artwork and, and push my what I was doing taking the graffiti stuff and applying it to an, an art style on a mm. big level so that was that was a highlight for me as well doing that like all the racking the spray paint that was flipping hardcore man like just going in and racking the spray paint and just the, 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 the determination to get the spray paint and putting yourself in that risk mm. and then risking your, your so you're risking your freedom the potentially your freedom and your life going on to like do train tracks and stuff all for just like writing stuff on the wall yeah. and just putting this getting involved in the graffiti culture like sometimes I'm thinking like wow if I did apl applied that energy if I had someone guiding me like in a different mm. way where I could that energy because that energy I look back at the energy I'm like wow I had the energy so to, much like, power and yeah, just desire. like jumping up walls yeah. scaling, scaling up walls jumping down walls like fat drops like mm. And somehow not getting injured, like, and going up on places that you haven't really assessed, and people fall through roofs and stuff, like, you know, and being and just thinking, wow, like, the kind of you had some kind of graffiti guardian angel there with you, mm. like protecting you. Somehow maybe you do have some kind of, because 
guard news, but not you know some some of these writers have lost their lives, man. Like uh, you know, you hear about some like they've gone to some kind of risky place. They didn't have the guidance, man. They just went like it's just like reached a peak for them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like for me now, I I I did I after doing that broccoli thing. There's a local tattoo shop guy, and he kind of just like headhunted me you'd like found walked into a post like oh are you the guy that wrote no and he was like, I was like yeah yeah and I was like oh no someone's talking about no and I don't even want to talk about it because it's just like mm. and he was like oh I've got a tattoo shop would you be up for like and, and I've always been into tattooing as well that's so incredible this is what I was talking about the different crazes like that 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 won't happen again like the BMX craze like you that, that happened and if you were there at the time it was big man like because you had like ET and all these things the BMX had never happened before in mm. history so same thing with graphics, like it was so intense at the time at a certain point. Like if you were there at the seventies, the first uh, start of it, like mm. with the hip hop craze, then you'd be riding that. Some people just get on it and they kinda they exist on the, the extreme parts of it, the route. Mm. You gotta get physical, you gotta break dance. You gotta get out there and yeah. rap and you gotta get out there and represent a That's graph right. and get your graph out there like it's, like, it's not a spectator style. sport. It's not a spectator sport. But it has. It is getting like that now with social yeah. media allowing it to kind of spread out, spread out there on on on, on the internet. The graph mm. is like it's being documented. Yeah. You know, and there's there's writers out there still killing it now. Do it like in ways that beyond what I was killing it. Some people are just smashing it, man. Mm. You know, I did do a lot of graph and like I, I don't really think about like the impact that it had, like, on what people saw it and that it would, people would be so into it, up-and-coming graffiti writers, you know, and they saw that and as kids, so to them it resonated. Because I see all the old-school writers, to me, like, Regret and mm. and Ayn oh, and all yeah. these 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 people yeah, yeah, that yeah. were in my local area, like Chuck, flipping all of these people, like, I see zombie stuff around, massive stuff, like, you know... Uh, yeah. All these kind of, like, like mass and, and, and flipping, like... All of those guys, like there were people like Drum and Acne doing some mad stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They were Fuck. they were doing all that mad stuff, like in their like they were like the bevy crew. I swear they were on it, like they because Mace, like, cause, Do you remember Mace as well. Yeah, Mace and those guys, like because because yeah. Zeph, you see Acid, he was like one. There was t different types of writers. Like Acid was like he opened me up to the world of all these different writers. So they're kind of like roadmen writers in a mm. way. It's like but they're just like going in and out of prison as well for all sorts of merch yeah, 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 yeah. and graphing and like flipping really doing dodge when you go out when you meet up with them you're like oh no if you never met this person before you'd be like oh my god this guy's so intense he's gonna get we're gonna go on a mad he's gonna get us into trouble i swear like and they're getting drunk and just getting lean up and going out and going right let's go out and do some let's go out and do some tagging let's go out and do mm. some bombing and you know and they've got their outlines with them and everyone's <laughs> pulling out their outlines of what they're gonna do like and it's like oh wow like you, you get to see everyone's like outlines that they've been doing on that, that was the cool part of it. That that, that, Those that the big, a big part of graffiti going to the writers bench mm. and sitting there with with the styles that you've that's that's that stuff's this is proper sick, man. You know, you were a part of that, man. You were you experienced it. People like they 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 add me and they're like, wow, like yeah. you're you, all in you one, man. You're and all, all in this, one. and I'm like, come on, man, that's a bit too heavy. But like, like nah, people, true, people, it's people true. Rep a sec, re respect what. The, the graph thing that I did back in the day, it just makes me feel, oh, like, you were there. Like, these people saying, hey, I, I remember, I'm like, well, right. Yeah. It meets some people who feel the passion and they're like, they want to say hey. And I go like, yeah, man. Yeah, bruv. Honestly, I think this podcast is so significant to a lot of people. They're going to be really stoked that you came on the show, man. Well, I'd like to say hey to everyone. Mm. Yeah, I hope you're having a good time. Thanks for, uh, you know... If you even like were there, like is is quite yeah. a. If you were there and you saw the stuff, and and anyone that's just kind of just starting out, just like, just be safe. And and if you see be him, really be as creative as you can, you know, just do the most best thing you can do out there, like. And if you see him busking, give him a pound, literally. Yeah. Give the man some love. You know what I mean? Yeah, just come and just like say what's up. Yes, yeah, say hello. Lewis. Come and jam and stuff. Lewis. It's been a pleasure, my brother. Thank yeah, you man. so much for having us in your humble abode. Huh? Um, yeah, this is the... Uh, this is the pimp the pimp fucking, wagon. <laughs> the, um, the, the boring machine. The boring machine, yeah. 
for the escapees that want to leave yes. this world. You go down to the bottom of the, the box there and you go through and you go into this another world. It's connecting to the, to the deep underground military base complex. Is there anything you want to say to people before we sign out? Just love one another and be truthful to yourself. And just, you know, be the best person you can. That's all I say. That's, try to give it your best shot in anything that you want to do in life. Whether it's graffiti, anything, going to work, whatever you're doing, man. This on the flip side, like, I heard that there's people... I, I can't even say, man, but it's graph-related, so people are... Yeah, so see, they, yeah. Like, you've got like train we drivers that about are like that train <laughs> drivers that are into like graffiti so yeah. much they're like I'm just gonna pull up here in this part of the lake and you make sure you're there at this time and then you can blam the thing yeah. I'm just gonna chill or some <laughs> shit I don't know you hear about that kind of thing don't you <laughs> I don't know nothing to do with me I am not, I'm just a mere conduit of this conversation no but you see people doing crazy stuff so yeah, still like crazy. hanging off the edge of things like how the heck are you getting up there just pure along the motorway isn't just, it? you've just got a ledge to hold on and you're as a writer I see it to this day and I'm like it sends a bit of a shiver down my spine because I'm like whoa I know that that risk what they had to do to do yeah. that and even that mad style now of like rolling, rolling yeah, even and like massive risky. like flipping fire hydrant things yeah, like yeah. what do you call them like fire extinguishers yeah, feeling, yeah, yeah. filling them up with paint yeah. paint and just going <laughs> <laughs> the massivest tag ever. Oh, I see that and I'm like, oh, man, now you know what's that. in his caravan, everybody. If that was out when I was around, I don't know. Like, you, you can utilize that shit. Yo, that, go, that'd be a whole other thing. Spread the whole train. <laughs> <laughs> Just attack it like a, what do they call it? Paintball session. <laughs> Paintballing graph, that's the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> cool, My brother, I'm going to love you and leave you. Cool, man. Thank you so much Thanks for having, for having me. My boy, yeah, man, thanks. Thank it's you. been a pleasure being on your podcast. Serves you right. It's been too long. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. Outlaying was out of fashion. So we do here. We're giving you the realest, giving you the exclusives, all right? Known inside the place. Um, and like I said, if you see Lewis on the street, give him a touch. Tell him what's up. Tell him thanks very much. If you ain't watching, you're listening. We're playing with lights right now. Okay, we're out. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace.